I'm going to answer the question that we get asked the most. How did we afford to buy this chateau? Were our parents rich? Did we win the lottery? Or did we just have enormous salaries? In order to answer this question, I need to take you back a few years. But before, I just want to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. More about that later. 12 years ago, I met Philip in Paris at his apartment. I had a mutual friend that I worked with who invited me for a night out. We ended up having an aperitif at Philip's apartment. And I remember when I first went and I first met him when he opened the door and thinking, wow, he's super handsome. And then secondly, wow, he has his own apartment and he has really good taste in furniture and he can cook. Six months after meeting Philip, I ended up moving in with him. It was meant to be temporary because I had a problem with my apartment, but I ended up staying. And well, the rest is history. About a year later, we figured out that the apartment was pretty small and we wanted to buy something together. Philip was really on it with the research and he found an ad for an apartment. It was a beautiful location in the 18th arrondissement of Paris. It only had one bedroom, but we could see the potential for changing a bit the layout and adding an extra bedroom. At this point, we decided to put Philip's apartment on the market. When he had bought it five years previously, it was completely derelict. It needed everything redoing and Philip basically did everything himself. It took him four months. That's probably where he learned all his DIY skills. But thankfully, the area in that five years had also become very fashionable and cool. That also helped us sell it really well. Philip, being a film director, didn't really have a stable income, but he did have a good sized down payment. And me working for Bauman, I had a salary. And together, we were able to apply for a loan. We got this property for a very good price because it only had one bedroom and it needed everything redoing. We spent 60,000 euros and a couple of months renovating it all completely. And three years later, when we put it on the market, it had almost doubled in price. During this time, we got engaged, we got married, and we had our first daughter, Lily. So the apartment, although it was amazing and we loved the location, it became too small for us. Philip was literally sharing his office with Lily's bedroom and our spare bedroom. So it was time to move on to our next project. The most important thing for us as a young family was to find a property with a garden. And obviously prices for properties with gardens in Paris are extremely expensive. So this meant that we decided to focus our research in the suburbs of Paris. We put our apartment on the market. I think we had about 30 visits and within a week it was sold. We sold the apartment very well and made a profit of 200,000 euros in two years. This meant that we had a down payment of 350,000 euros to put towards our next property. During this time, I'd also got a pay rise at work. So we were able to increase our mortgage to 500,000 euros. We now had a budget of 800,000 to buy and renovate this terrace house in the suburbs. It hadn't been renovated for over 50 years and it was a little bit of an ugly duckling, let's say. It had a lot of original 1930s details and we saw the potential of opening up a lot of spaces, doing a huge roof extension that enabled us to add another two bedrooms and it ended up being a beautiful home for our family.
The house came with a small 70 square meter garden that needed completely remodeling, and this was Philip's first taste of gardening. And we joke that the garden he's in charge of now is only a thousand times bigger. Having a lovely garden and a beautiful home, it didn't 100% satisfy our desire to escape the city. And during the next year, I got pregnant with Ella and it started us thinking a little bit more about what we really wanted for our life and our family. Although I loved my job in fashion, I found it increasingly hard to be a mother of two and working so many crazy hours for my job, late nights and sacrificing my weekends. And conveniently, Philip had an idea that had been sort of in the back of his head for many, many years since I'd met him. He just happened to like slip it in there when I was probably at my weakest and he made the suggestion that we sell our house in the suburbs and buy that chateau that he had been going on about for about 10 years. And I was weak enough and desperate enough to say yes. One of the most exciting moments in our chateau adventure was the day we went online with our freshly designed homepage. We've spent a ridiculously long time designing it, quite a fair amount of money to a web designer to transfer our design ideas to a properly functioning homepage. And while it's not a prize-winning design, it did a good job for the last three years. I do wish, though, we'd known about Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and to run your business, who also happens to be this week's ad. The good thing with Squarespace is that you don't need to have any programming skills nor to pay a designer to build a professional, good-looking and extremely functional web page. The way it works is simple. You fill out a questionnaire, Squarespace suggests your template, which you can then further personalize with your pictures and your texts. There are templates and functionalities for every use. Whether you want to display your work in a portfolio, showcase your physical business online, or maybe you want to create a proper online store with all the features needed to run a successful e-commerce. You can even buy your domain from Squarespace, which is a good idea because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. So if you're looking to create your own professional online presence, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash how to renovate a chateau to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Philip had his epiphany on holiday in Italy and as soon as we got back to Paris we made a plan that we would go and start researching and find our chateau. Our only criteria when we started our chateau search was mainly the location and we preferred an 18th century chateau. I think it was the first weekend back we found a chateau online and we went to visit it. Philip fell in love with this first property. It was everything that he had dreamed of. It was a beautiful chateau. It had six hectares of landscape gardens. It had a greenhouse and the most beautiful orangery. However, for me, it was just not in the right location and way too rural. At this point, Philip was full-time chateau hunting and trawling the internet when he came across this chateau and it had been on the market for two years at that point. We immediately fell in love with it. It was everything we wanted. It was the location, it was the perfect size. It had a really great energy. It just was very welcoming and I definitely completely envisioned our life here as soon as I saw it. In the meantime, we sold our property in the suburbs and after all the works that we had done, made a staggering 350,000 euro profit. If you think that's a lot, then consider that the guy that bought it from us sold it just one year later and made another 100,000 without any more work. This gave us a down payment of 800,000 euros. Our chateau was on the market for just over 1 million euros. If we got the same 500,000 euro loan from the bank, we would be able to buy the chateau and have 300,000 euros to start the renovation works. It was a long and complicated negotiation and with another buyer coming in, we thought that everything was lost. Either we forget about the chateau, we try and move on and look for something else, or we take a big chunk of our renovation budget and we put that towards increasing our offer on the chateau, but this meant we would have very little money to renovate the chateau. It was a risk that we thought was worth taking. 
Our new increased offer was finally accepted and we thought from now on everything would be smooth sailing. We went to the bank who had told us already that we could have the same loan with all our paperwork sorted. And then two months later, we got the devastating news that our loan had been declined. And the reason for this is the bank's own credit insurance refused to vouch for a chateau as a private residence. Having already signed the pre-contract, we knew that we only now had two months to find another bank to give us a loan. If not, we would not be able to buy the chateau, we would lose the chateau, but we would also lose a 100,000 euro down payment. This put us under an enormous amount of stress. We were holding out hope that we would find another bank but then we suddenly got the news that a second bank refused us, then a third bank, and then a fourth bank. This even had an impact on Philip's health and his blood pressure went high. This didn't help at all because one of the main things that you have to do in order to get a loan in France is to pass a health check. And the main thing they're looking at is your blood pressure. The main feedback we got from the other banks was that they didn't believe in our business plan. They didn't think we were capable of renovating the chateau and running it as a successful business. At that point, a good friend came to us and offered to put in a good word with his personal banker who he had done previous business with. Philip pitched the business plan so successfully that not only was she convinced, but she was able to convince the whole back office to give us the loan. We cried when we found out that we got the loan. One person and only one person believed in our project. Without her, we wouldn't be here today. And on top of that, we gained a new friend. Et si tu regardes ça, merci infiniment. With the loan secured, there was one hurdle left, the medical exam. I was fine. Philip's blood pressure was still very high. The doctor saw that he was very nervous. He asked him to do the test again and again and again until finally the numbers were right. It was the most stressful time in our chateau journey, more stressful than the most challenging moments in our chateau renovation, but I would do it all again. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. For exclusive videos and behind the scenes updates, have a look at our Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching.